Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. Got a project on the table today, making a skid for my 15 horsepower Patton Brothers oil field engine. Also making a skid for a, a lively steam engine that we have up at the farm. And it requires a lot of the same part. Uh, in this case, I believe there's 16 of these pieces of angle iron. They all need four holes each. You see, uh, here's an example of where the holes are going. I have this laid out that I scribed and center punched. And uh, this is going to be a little trick for you home gamers out there. If you're a machinist or something, uh, I wouldn't recommend watching this video. I'm already going to teach you something you already know. But I uh, started out just uh, like I normally would if I was making two or three of these. I would just lay out all the holes just by hand. I, I use a, a square use my calipers um, and just you know with a combination of these two tools you can lay out pretty much uh, whatever hole location you want depending on what exactly you're doing in this case uh, all I really needed is the square because it's just it's a, it's a square part and you, know, you just lock this down you make all of these marks and then you change your dimension and make all the, the marks going the other way at the intersections you center punch anyway that is extremely tedious. That's a lot of cross hatching, a lot of center punching for all these parts. And it's, it's, it's just not a good way to go. So let me show you uh, a little trick, I guess you can call it, or, or a technique at the drill press that will make this go a lot easier. Now this is going to be more common to use on a, a milling machine, but you can still kind of adapt this concept to a drill press. Okay, here we are. Here is my setup in the uh, Craftsman drill press. Uh, the, the basic idea here is to make it so that all you have to do is put your workpiece in, drill it, take the workpiece out, slide the next one in, don't do any thinking, don't do any visual aligning or anything. Just put it in, clamp it, drill it. And we accomplish that with uh, a couple different methods here. Firstly, this drill press vise is clamped down in a special uh, location. And also, I have a, a stop here, a, a depth stop or travel stop, whatever you want to call it. The only purpose of this clamp, it's not holding anything down, but when I put this piece of angle iron in here, I slide it up against this C-clamp so it can only travel so far out. And only this jaw of the vise is movable, so that means the the back surface of my angle iron is never going to move in or out. It stays right there. So once I get everything aligned, I have this one piece that's in here is the piece that I laid out by hand and center punched so I could visually, by eye, align everything to this drill bit. And so I started just with everything kind of loose, aligned everything the way I wanted, uh, tightened the clamps down, checked it, made sure that nothing moved, tightened down everything the final tightness and we're ready to go. So you see I have the uh, drill bit lined up for this hole. Let's say I want to take it out. Let's say I, I've, I've uh, drilled this hole already. Now I can loosen the vise, slide this piece out, flip it around, slide it back into the stop, push it against the non-moving jaw of the vise, close the vise, and there, there you go, I'm ready to, to drill again. Now, there's one thing to note here, uh, depending on exactly what your application is. You have to keep in mind that your, uh, your zero points, your datum points, or whatever you want to call them, is the edge of this C-clamp and the back uh, uh, non-movable jaw face. So, uh, these holes that I'm drilling are not centered. This is a two inch piece of angle iron. This hole is not one inch from this edge. So what I'm getting at is I can only drill two of these holes. I can drill this one and the one in the opposite corner. But if I wanted to drill this hole, I can't flip it and put it in this way because this drill bit is drilling a hole that is uh, an inch and a quarter away from the back jaw. So in this case I'll have to drill two holes on each piece and then I'll have to 
take my setup piece, flip it around this way, line it up again with the line the drill bit up again with the center point, center punch mark. You know, I'll have to move my vise forward or back, align everything up again, and drill the final two holes. I could save myself that trouble by drilling a hole directly in the middle of this two inch piece, but I, I don't want the hole there for a couple of reasons, so I'm putting it a little further out to the edge, and as a result, I need to change my setup halfway through. So you can really apply this technique to a lot of different uh, jobs that you might have. Of course, this isn't really worth your time if you're doing five pieces or so. Just, just uh, you know, hold this with a pair of vice grips, drill it by hand, who cares. I, I have a bunch of crappy pieces of wood like this that I clamp in my drill press vise here and just drill away, and it works well enough, but it's too much layout work for the 16, 18 pieces, whatever it is that I'm that I'm uh, drilling, I've lost track. Another thing to keep in mind, uh, sometimes you might need to change tools. Uh, I'm drilling a 3 8 hole. I think I can get away with drilling a 3 8 hole just all the way through without a pilot hole. But if you're drilling a 1 inch hole, you're going to have to do a you know a quarter inch bit, a 7 16 or whatever, and work your way up. In that case, especially if you're on a drill press, if you're on a milling machine, it doesn't matter. Everything is X, Y, Z and uh, nicely aligned. But on a drill press, if I have to move this table down to be able to drop this drill bit out or put a longer, bigger drill bit in, when I do that, this this table, just like any other drill press, it swivels and pivots around, so I'm going to lose my, my exact um, location there. So if I have to drop the table down to change a tool, you have to uh, readjust everything. That's it. I think I've talked enough about it. I'm sure you get the concept. You can get creative with this with this sort of technique, especially if you're just a home game where you got a crappy drill press, some C clamps or whatever. And uh, if you have a milling machine, you already know this. This is a uh, pretty elementary, but like I said, it, it's good for good for you know, somebody, you know, some shade tree mechanic who uh, needs to drill a bunch of holes because every once in a while, you know, we're not a production machine shop uh, out here in the shade tree world, but every once in a while, you have to make a bunch of the same parts, just like. I am right now. So I tighten this down. Let's uh, let's give this a whirl. Also, it's important, things like this, make sure they're not going to get in the way of your drill spindle as you're bringing the, uh, the, the drill bit down. Tell you what, it sure is nice not having to hold this piece with a pair of vice grips, hoping it doesn't fetch up and take the vice grips for a ride. There we go. So that's that's how it's done. It seems like this 3 8 bit does it just fine in one go, um, which is good. Make me make my life a little easier, a little quicker. I don't have to step drill it. 3 8 really isn't that big. Um, one thing you might notice, you might have noticed that this table has got a fair amount of flex to it and it's just the uh, the nature of the beast for this Craftsman drill press. I'm not doing this in my big uh, Kennedy Auto belt drive drill press, it just turns too slow. For a small drill bit you want to spin them pretty decent. This is at 500 RPM right now and I probably could go faster. But anyway, that's how it's done everybody. Got one down and a bunch to go. And uh, like I said, I got two holes here, and then once I'm done with these, I'll have to readjust my alignment, do the other two holes, and I'll be ready to go. So thanks for watching, everybody. Hope, hope this has uh, helped out some of you guys and gals out there. Uh, and that's all I got to say, so thanks for watching, and come on back for more.